Good morning, everybody. How are we doing today? Isn't it good to be in God's house? Thank you for just joining us online as well. We're glad to have you. Well, we are continuing our series, Miraculous, and the subtitle today is called Jesus Brings Freedom. How many believe that today? You know, I was thinking about it. Some of us don't realize that we don't have to live the way we're living, that it can actually get better. Good morning. It can get better. You know, some of you, I just had this in my spirit today, that some of you, you're tormented at night. Did you know the Bible says that he gives his beloved sweet sleep? That's what the Bible says. So when you sleep at night, it's supposed to be pleasant. And if it's not, and you feel like you're being harassed, that's not God's best. And so, you know, whenever I sign a contract, how many know they tell you to look at the fine print? Because you don't want to have a gotcha. But how many know with the Bible, there's some fine print of those that want to get you blessed? And God wants to bless you and me and do some incredible things. And so there's promises that he has. And the only way to capture those promises is if we know that what they are. Because we have adversaries that try to take from all of us, don't they? People are trying to take advantage of us or take something that's ours and I'm just telling you, if you know what is yours, you'll fight for what's yours. And you're like, I'm not losing that. Some of you, you wake up depressed a lot. You know what? That's not God's best. What do you mean? The Bible says that he wants you to have fullness of joy. He wants you to have the joy of the Lord because the Bible says the joy of the Lord is your strength. And so if you don't have joy, it's hard to have strength spiritually. And so these are some of his promises. Did you know he wants you to have peace? Some of you feel anxious. He doesn't want you to feel anxious. What do you mean? I mean, he wants you to have peace. And so these are some of God's precious promises that he has for us, but we have to fight. Sometimes I don't have anybody else around, so I got to literally lay my hands on my own head and say, in the name of Jesus, cut this out. I declare peace over myself. I'm not going to be anxious, uptight, upset, worried, troubled, frustrated. I'm not participating in Jesus' name. I lay hands on my own head. Does it work? Some of the times. What do you do if when it doesn't work? You all know the answer to that. Come on, round. You just got to keep fighting. And my, my goal is today for you to turn off this broadcast or walk out these doors happy, 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 believing that God is with you, God is for you, and growing your faith because the Bible says faith comes by hearing and hearing by the Word of God. So today, I'm going, to, I'm going to give you a Bible. I'm going to give you a whole bunch of Bible verses just to leap inside of you and bring you encouragement and joy. Amen, everybody? Because God is with you. Jesus said in Mark 9, 23, if you can believe, all things are possible to him who believes. Amen, everybody? Anything is possible today. Remember last week, we studied about a guy who'd been sick. Remember how many years? Who said it? Who said that? They were right. Somebody, 38 years. That's a long time. 38 minutes seemed long nowadays. 38 years and that person got a miracle. I pray that it will be sooner than later that you get your miracle, but don't give up. You keep fighting. You keep standing. You keep believing. Amen, everybody? John 10.10 10 says this. The thief, now the thief is our adversary spiritually, the devil, Satan, right? He comes for three reasons, to steal, kill, and destroy. And Jesus said this, I have come that you might have life, and you might have it, what, everybody? More abundantly. But again, some of us have learned to live with not God's best, and just we tolerated or put up with it, realizing that things could actually get better if we pressed into God and asked him to help us. I got to tell you, I'm not singing about the God of the breakthrough if I'm not believing for a breakthrough. Let me just, I'm just going to, I'll be like this. If I'm not going to believe for it, I'm, oh, well, there they go again, dancing. Here we go, right? If I'm singing it, I'm believing it, Right? That, that, that's, I want the words in my mouth to be, to be 
honorable, right? And I, I want to be full of faith today. So I want to show you a story about a dad who was believing God for his son to have a, a spiritual breakthrough or freedom. We find the story in Matthew chapter 17, starting with number verse 14. It said, when they had come to the multitude, a man came to him. Look, look at this posture, kneeling down to him, capital H meaning Jesus. So he's on his knees to Jesus. He said, Lord, imagine, picture this with me. He says, have mercy on my son. He's desperate. I mean, you're on your knees. God help me. Have mercy on me. For he's epi an epileptic and he's, he su suffers severely. And he's often thrown into the fire and often into water. So he's got a lot going on. So I brought him to your disciples, but they could not cure him. And I went up for prayer. I made my way through the crowd. They laid their hands on him. And he says, nothing changed, Jesus. So I'm coming to you asking for help. That's a, that's a dad who's desperate. And then Jesus answered and said, Oh, faithless and perverse generation, he says there in that scripture. Let me read that with you. He said, How long shall I be with you? How long shall I bear with you? Bring him here to me. And Jesus, look at this, he rebuked the demon, and it came out of him, and the child was cured from that very hour. Hurt. Time out. Okay, some things are not natural, but they're spiritual. Everybody hear me? I'm not trying to scare anybody. We're not going to get kooky, spooky, or weird, or be a granola right now. Granola, nutty, flaky, or fruity, okay? We're not going to do any of that. But I don't believe there's a demon under every chair, but, but it's a real world. Because the thief comes to steal, kill, and destroy. Okay, so there's an adversary. I mean, believe me, you've been tempted just like we all have, so we know there's an adversary. And so Jesus prays for the boy, and he's free that very hour. And, you know, I, I, I have a friend who's a doctor. He attends this church. He's my buddy, and he's helped me, and he's prescribed medication and done stuff for me. But even he asked me to pray for people because some things are beyond medicine or not medical. You hear what I'm saying to you? And so you just have to be sensitive to what's going on. Because some things are spiritual. Everybody with me on that? Ten of you? Everybody else with me on that? Yeah. Just say, some things are spiritual in nature. So the disciples have a private conversation. Privately they said, why could we not cast it out? <laughs> They're saying, how come when we prayed for that boy, for that demon to leave him, it didn't work. Come on, that's the Rick Tran Van Wagner translation. That's exactly what they said. We don't get why it didn't happen. Verse 20, Jesus said, because of your unbelief. For surely I say to you, if you had faith as a mustard seed, a small little seed as a mustard seed, you will say to this mountain, in this case the mountain was the boy being delivered, move from here to there, and it will move, and nothing will be impossible to you. However, this kind does not come out except by prayer and fasting. Okay, so they're struggling with their faith. And he says, let me tell you something you can do when you're struggling with your faith, disciples. You can fast and pray and ask God to help you with your faith. So we all are at different spots in this spiritual walk that we're going through. And sometimes you've got to dig in a little deeper than normal to get a little further around. You, you hear what I'm saying there? Sometimes you've got to really press in, and it may take more than two minutes. You know, I mean, he's the God of the breakthrough, but sometimes you've got to really go for it to see God's hand move. Does that make sense too? Yeah. Three, the 20 of you. I'm, I'm growing in numbers here. That's exciting. So he's telling them, you can see a breakthrough, but you have to dig in, or you got to pray and seek me. And so this father sees this son get a miracle. It's so bad that this demon is trying to throw him in a fire, throw him in the water, and drown him. And in one touch from Jesus, he's supernaturally touched and never the same anymore. 
That's a wonderful, wonderful thing. You know, Jesus was in the synagogue. He's reading a passage, and we get to hear about it in Luke 4.18. This, what, this, ta- ta- this scripture was talking about Jesus when he read it. He says, the Spirit of the Lord is on me because he's anointed me to proclaim good news to the poor. And he sent me to proclaim, listen to this, freedom for the prisoners, talking spiritually freedom, and recovery of sight for the blind, and to set the oppressed free. That's why Jesus was sent to destroy the works of darkness so mankind could have freedom. Amen, everybody? So I was thinking about that. How do, we, how do we get freedom? Well, it depends on what you're standing on. Sometimes I'm walking around ground that is slippery, or sometimes the ground underneath you doesn't feel solid. And then there's other times, you're, like right now, if I'm on this stage, it's solid. And you need, in order to be strong and balanced, you need something strong underneath you. And how many know... This is the strongest thing I know for the believer to stand on is the principles and the scriptures of the Word of God, the Bible today. And so I'm going to give you some Bible scriptures because that's what we stand on. There used to be a song I sang when I was a little kid, Standing on the Promises of God. Anybody remember that? Anybody old school? A lot of you are younger, so you're singing God of the Breakthrough. But when I was younger, we sang, we, we sang Standing on the Promises. And... It's powerful when you stand on God's Word. So let me work with you for a few minutes to talk about what we can foundationally stand on to believe for freedom in our lives. You ready? All right. Put your seatbelt on. Here we go. You know these, but I'm going to help you know these. Number one, you ready? God loves you. Do you believe God loves you? Oh, good. That's most of you. Fantastic. God loves you. It's hard to receive anything from God if you don't believe he loves you. But if you think he loves you, ooh, firm foundation. Yep, yep, yep. Solid ground. It's not slippery. I'm not sinking. Great. He loves me. So when I pray, I can pray and receive a miracle because I know he loves me. Everybody good with that? All right, let's read two scriptures and we're going to jump to the next part. In Psalms 5.12, it says, For the Lord, for you bless the godly, O Lord, you surround them with your shield of love. Isn't that beautiful? You're, come on, put your shield of love around us, Jesus. Amen, everybody. Psalms 86, 15. But you, Lord, are compassionate and gracious God, slow to anger, abounding in what, everybody? Love and faithfulness. He's abounding in love. So part of my foundation, okay, God loves me. Got it. Great, Pastor Rick. What's your second one? Okay, God actually cares. He cares. You are important to him. You're important to God. You may not have heard that from other people, but you are important to God. He cares about you. Let me show you a scripture. 1 Peter 5, 6, and 7. Humble yourselves, therefore, under the mighty hand, God's mighty hand, that he may lift you up in due time. Cast all your anxiety. Everybody hear that? All your anxiety. If you're dealing with anxiety, give it to him in your prayer. Lord, here's all my anxiety. You can have it now. On him, here's why. Because he... Wow. I can give him my troubles because he cares. Isn't that beautiful? He loves me and he cares for me. He cares for you today. Matthew eleven twenty eight 28 says, Come to me, all who are labor and heavy laden, and I will give you rest. You feel like the world's on your shoulders, the weight of the world, and it's too much. Jesus says, come to me. He wants to make it lighter. He wants to make it easier for you and me. So God loves me. God cares. Let me show you the third thing. God wants you free. 
He doesn't want you tormented another night of your life. Some of you have nightmarish dreams from the pit of hell. He does not want you to have that. He doesn't want you to be anxious. He didn't want you to be fearful. He, he doesn't want you to have that stuff. So I want to read a cool scripture. 2 Corinthians 3.17 Now the Lord is the Spirit, and where the Spirit of the Lord is, there's what, everybody? Okay. Where is the Holy Spirit? Ooh, somebody got it right out of the gate. Somebody said where? In us. Time out. What? What? Yeah, yeah, yeah. He dwells in our earthen vessels, the Bible says. If you have asked Jesus to come into your life, to be the Lord of your life, then you have been changed on the inside because the Holy Spirit has come on the inside of you. And the Spirit is what raised Jesus from the dead and made him back to life again. And so, let me read that scripture again. So where the Spirit of the Lord is, there's what? So where's the Holy Spirit? Okay, that's, that's more of you, but I'm losing some of you in that. Some of you are like, what, what, what? You may not have heard that in Sunday school, but it's still true. The Holy Spirit dwells inside of each believer in Christ. Okay? And so there is breakthrough. There is a spirit of freedom that resides on the inside of you. Everybody hear me? Okay. That's the God of the breakthrough that we serve. Now, when Jesus went to the cross, he never sinned, right? right. We're on the same Okay, I, right? <laughs> We're on the same page. I, I hope I don't have to explain that. He, he was perfect. He was sinless. He was spotless without sin. And when he went to the cross, he took on humanity's sin and shed his blood so that we could have the forgiveness of sin and be in right standing with God. And we, he, he beat back death, hell, and the grave, and the keys of the kingdom were given to the believers in Christ. So with that in mind, Galatians 5.1 says, it was for freedom that Christ set you free. So Christ went to the cross so you could be free, and you're free so you can experience freedom in your everyday living. You shouldn't be depressed and, and going through a terrible time each and every day for years and years of your life. Jesus wants you to have freedom. Pastor Rick, I'm having trouble believe, believing. Nothing is impossible, the Bible says, to him who believes. And faith comes by hearing and hearing by the word of God. And Jesus came to set the prisoners free. That's what the Bible said. John 8, 34 through 36 says this. Jesus answered them, Most assuredly, I say to you, whoever commits a sin is a slave to sin. Okay? And a slave does not abide in the house forever, but a son abides forever. Therefore, if the son makes you free, you shall be free indeed. Okay. When I... Gave my life to Jesus. Something changed spiritually on the inside of us. We call this the born-again experience, right, everybody? And, and so I, I, have a, I become a new creature. Old things have passed away. My old life and my old ways and my old passions and my old desires and all things have become new. So God begins to transform me and my desires, my appetite, the things I want spiritually, all of a sudden start to change, not because people gave me rules and regulations, but I begin to have a heart for God and not for the things of the world. That makes sense? I changed. Now, I'm free, but how many know sometimes I may struggle with stuff still? Okay, well, Paul says, why do I do the things I don't want to do? You know, why does that happen? Well, sometimes we struggle with sin and temptation. And I tell you all the time, the one that you feed the most is the one that's going to be dominant the most. So if you feed your spirit, your spirit is going to be more dominant than your flesh. When I speak of flesh, I mean the selfish desires 
And it, it's listed in the book of Galatians. But we want to have the fruit of the Spirit, which is love, joy, peace, long-suffering, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, and self-control, right? Those are the ones we want to display because when we put more and more of God in us, we should have more and more fruit being displayed through our lives. But when I go on a spiritual hiatus and don't have anything to do with God and connect with Him, how many know these fruits will show less and less and more and more of the self-nature wants to manifest? And so the one you feed the most is the one that's going to be dominant the most. So when He says... If the Son makes you free, you'll be free indeed. You have the ability to be supernaturally free from any darkness. You don't have to be condemned or shamed or guilt-ridden. You don't have to have any of that junk anymore. Because He gave you freedom. Isn't that wonderful news? Jesus came to bring good news. Fourth and final point. You might get encouraged, so be careful. Things can get better. Amen means so be it. Or let me translate it for you. I'd like a piece of that. <laughs> Things can get better. I lost some people there again, didn't I? I'm going to try again because I want you blessed. Things can get better in your life. In your life. Think about it. It could get better. You've been praying. So let's believe, right? Two last scriptures. Oh, this is filet mignon. And it's almost lunchtime, everybody. Oh, oh sweet Jesus. I love this scripture. Hebrews 4.15. This high priest of ours. Who's the high priest of ours? Jesus. This high priest of ours understands our, look at this, weaknesses. Did you hear that? For he faced all the same testings or temptations we do, yet he did not sin. Okay? Jesus understands rejection. Remember Judas? Kissed him on the cheek. That was his buddy he brought to prayer and had him arrested in his private place where he taught him how to pray. How many know that, would, that could hurt? I mean, you think you've been betrayed? He was betrayed with a kiss from Judas. He understands betrayal. He understands rejection. The other day I was working around something and I got this, this, this thorn just got me. And I just started bleeding and I, it was one little thorn got me. Jesus wore a crown of thorns. I mean, I had one little, it was a little little bitty thing. And it hurt. He had a crown of them. So you can't tell me he doesn't understand pain because he understands pain. Everybody hearing me? He understands. So Please don't say, oh, he doesn't. No, he knows exactly the pain that you're walking through. He understands abandonment. He understands rejection. He understands these things. It says, we don't have a high priest who doesn't understand our weaknesses. He faced all the same testings, yet he did not sin. He understands what you're going through, and he wants to help you. Last scripture. Buckle up. Buckle up. <sighs> This one's a good one. I'll just tell you that right now. Isaiah 34, verse 5. Tell everyone who's discouraged, be strong and don't be afraid. God is coming to your rescue. Come on, everybody. Isn't that a great scripture? Wow. Oh, isn't that a good one? Man, you ought to go around quoting that one. Isaiah 34, 5. And that's the Good News Translation. Oh, that's a good one. Please don't ask me afterward what translation that is. I just told you, okay? It's good news. It's good news, okay? Listen, some of you, you know exactly what I'm talking about. You're going through, you just feel tormented. You're going through some spiritual stuff. And you're like, 
Maybe, maybe you asked some disciples to pray and you didn't see anything. Uh, whatever. It, it is what it is. And maybe, maybe I've even prayed for you. Listen, it doesn't matter. You just need to keep digging in and believing God to be a God of a breakthrough in your life today. So I want to pray. Ask God to move for you. And just believe God for a miracle today. Amen, everybody? Let's put your hands on your heart with me, if you will. Father, today... I believe that you're a God of the breakthrough. I believe that nothing is impossible to him who believes. And today, God, we stand on your word. We're asking for a miracle. We're asking for breakthrough. We rebuke every dark spirit from the pit of hell that would come against your people. Maybe it's anxiety. Maybe it's worry. Maybe it's tormenting at night or bad nightmares and dreams. Whatever it is, depression, I command you to leave God's people alone. And I ask for the power of the Holy Spirit, the power of the resurrection, that same spirit that raised Christ Jesus from the dead, you, that you, Holy Spirit, would supernaturally touch people, meet them right where they're at, meet their needs, touch them. You are the God of the breakthrough. You're a God that sets the prisoners free. And we believe that you're coming to our rescue. God, we know you love us. You care for us. You want us to have freedom, and we know that things can change. We pray that you would do this in the mighty name which is above every single name. And Father, let it start today where we mark in our hearts and minds where we said something good began to happen. We pray this in the name above every name now in Jesus' name. Come on, if you agree with me, say a hearty amen right now. Come on. Amen. Come on, amen. Thank you, God. We believe. I want you to just continue in that posture of prayer with me. I want you to pray for anybody who's not given their lives to Jesus. God would reveal himself right now to people. Pray that anybody who needs a touch, God would give it to them right now. I want to encourage you. Some of you feel like God is a million miles away from you. Can I tell you, I believe his arms are reaching out wide and he's wanting you to come and connect with him how do I do that Pastor Rick well it starts with what you believe first you got to believe that Jesus is God's son he died on the cross he rose again and he's alive right now I believe there's people that you say I believe that well then you can take the next step when you have faith like that because that's a supernatural thing that you have faith for that. God's moving in your heart. The next step is where you surrender. It's faith and then it's you surrender. Where you surrender your life to God. You ask him to forgive you of your sins. In a moment, I'll lead a prayer. And all I ask you to do is pray that prayer. Meaning, mean it from your heart. And I believe God will give you a spiritual breakthrough. And start something beautiful inside of you today supernatural it's like you'll be born again saved something awesome is going to happen in your life today i believe there's people that you say i've never asked jesus christ to come into my heart and today for the very first time i want to say yes to jesus pastor rick pray for me it'd be a joy to pray for you maybe you're here and you'd say pastor i i consider myself a christian I've prayed at one point to ask Christ in my life, but I'm not living right. My heart is so convicted, and I just want to—I just want to hit the spiritual reset button. I just want to rededicate my life to God. Would you please pray for me as I just recommit my life to Christ? Absolutely. Please pray, everybody, right now. If that's you, I'd like to see who I'm praying for in this building right now. Would you just boldly put your hand up high so I can see who I'm praying for this morning? Say, yeah, pray for me. Yeah, God bless you, young lady. Just looking around the room here. God bless you. God bless you, sir. Just looking around the room. God bless you, young lady. God bless you. How about in the... Yeah, yeah, God, God bless you. God bless you. God bless you. I don't want to miss anybody. God bless you, sir. God bless you. God bless you. God bless you. Just going around the room here. God bless you. God bless you. God bless you. Yeah, I'll pray for you. God bless you. God bless you. God bless you. I'm going down the bottom of my area. God bless you. God bless you. God bless you. God bless you. Just going around the room here. I don't want to miss anybody. God bless you. God bless you. God bless you. Yeah, a lot of people today. God bless you. Yeah, God bless you. I see your hands. God bless you too. God bless you too. Anybody else say, please include me in that prayer. Yeah, God bless you. 
More hands going up. God bless you. Anybody else? God bless you. Thank you, Jesus. Yeah, God bless you too. Yeah. Anyone on this side? I don't want to miss anybody. Yeah, God bless you. Yeah, God bless you. Can we pray this together? Let's pray this out loud together. Say, Dear Lord Jesus, I believe you're the Son of God. I believe you died for me and that you rose again and you're alive right now. Please come into my heart. Forgive me of my sins. Change my life. Help me to be the person you want me to be and fill me with your Holy Spirit. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. Come on, everybody. Amen. Glory be to God. Thank you, Jesus. You were just guided through the salvation prayer. If you gave your heart to Jesus today, you have just made the best decision ever. You may be wondering, what's next? Well, we've got you covered. Scan the code on the screen to learn more on how you can grow in your relationship with Jesus. If you would like to connect with someone personally, you can text us at FCC Guests to 97,000 to connect with our team. Now, it's that time in our service where we prepare to give our tithes and our offerings. If this is your first time with us, don't feel any obligation to give. This is our gift to you. If you call FCC, your church, and you want to participate in giving today, you can do that by texting FCC GIVE to 97,000 or you can give securely online at FCCLive.com forward slash give. I'm going to take this time to pray over our offering. Let's pray. Lord Father, we thank you. We thank you for your goodness over us. We thank you that your word says, Lord, to give and it shall be given unto you. Thank you for all of our blessings, Lord, and we dedicate and give you this tithe, Lord, just a fraction of all you give us. Lord, bless it and use it, Lord, and thank you for your goodness over our lives. In Jesus' name, amen. If you would like prayer today, you can text FCC Prayer to 97000, and a member of our prayer team will reach out to you soon. Thank you for joining us for church today. We hope you have the best week ever.